GTS, this is SV KISS, SV KISS, and approaching out of harbour exit. I'd like to leave harbour via west, via west. Over. Thank you. Uh, uh, Jeff, yeah, where are you heading, please? What's your destination? Yeah, destination Eastbourne, one person on board. Okay, sir, so you're clear to depart the Outer Marina and the West of Anchor. Your signal. Two seconds, Thanks so much. Six knots. Get the sails up as soon as I'm out of uh, harbour. Not allowed to have sails up inside Dover Harbour because of the uh, large traffic. It's tightly controlled by the uh, home DGS. First ferry coming in. Mainsail halyards caught up there and it is just rougher than I thought it was going to be from the winds we've had over the last couple of days and uh, I'm not going up front solo <laughs> just to try and undo that halyard. Beautiful dawn but I'm not enjoying it so far with that halyard caught around the spreader. Oh, I've got the sails up. Wouldn't say I'm terrified, but uh, <laughs> I've only got a few butterflies. Making nearly five knots now with the sails up, but I'm on a close reach. Here comes the sun. We're going to set it down to the pair of the turn around now. Let's put the pair of the turn around now. Well, when it's safe, I'll, uh, I'll get that in. Well, I don't feel safe at the moment. I'm staying inside the cockpit. Slightly off track, but I'm quite a little bit of a way off track. This is as close as I can sail to the wind. I'm going to attack it a bit later. Bloody hope not. Sun's up. Slightly off course because of the wind. It's 
it's now blowing straight on the nose and I'm under engine and the wave frequency is just I'm taking a bit of a battering it's just knocking the boat speed down to about a knot, knot and a half and come back up, another wave come boom, knock speed down to another knot so it's taken a long time to get around this point on Dungeness power station uh, but once I'm around it I should be able to uh, get back under sail although at about 12 o'clock it's now about 9.30 a.m. Uh, the tide will turn against me for about an hour and a half but the wind's steady 10 knots gusted up to about 17, 19 knots so I'll probably push on rather than pulling in um, waiting for conditions to improve it's a bit uncomfortable gagging gagging for a cup of tea but even if I could get the water into the cup I don't think the cup would it would stay in the cup for very long so ah, hopefully things will calm down a little bit but wow this is rocking <laughs> okay see you in a bit shifts around a little bit that's why I've just lost a little bit of speed and uh, it's just been close reach all the way so far uh, more than halfway it's going to take me a little bit longer than I thought and the sea state's calmed down a little I'm not getting the big waves smashing into the bow bringing me almost to a stop the sun shining! Uh, we like it when the sun shines. Temperature's about 21 degrees, so um, yeah. it's all good.
Western, westerly, and uh, sails are flapping, so I'm getting time to take the sails in. Clean the main up for good stability. Pull the uh, Genoa in. Wind against tide, making for a very choppy sea. A lot of spray over the deck. Three knots, waves knock me down to about two, uh, cross tide, and the rain clouds are coming in. Living the dream. It's coming up at 4 pm. Um, so we've got about eight, eight or ten miles to go. Long day, 44 nautical miles in total. The weather's just been, the wind just keeps going into the no-sail zone and then I'm on a close reach all the time. This is the first sort of longest trip I've done, sort of the third season I've been sailing. I've always had a dream, not always, but I had a dream to go sailing. I watched a documentary back in the early 1990s of a family who took their severely disabled son on a catamaran across to France, through the Canal de Midi and stopping off, taking skiing in the Alps, and then on to Greece. And the last shot of the documentary was of this young man who had no use of uh, his body below the neck, just lying in the Aegean with flotation bags around him and just smiling and, and laughing and you know I kind of planted the seed in my head and I thought you know maybe one day when I retire I'll go sailing to the Mediterranean through the Canal de Midi. <laughs> I had a dream. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm doing on this trip over the next month or so is to think about you know, do I really want to do this? You know, is, is this for me? Do I want to carry on sailing? Do I just want to poodle up and down the estuaries? Or, you know, have I got the hushpa to actually go and do some long trips? 44 miles today, that's not a big distance. But working against, working with the tides down the English Channel, that's, that's a tough one. today. A few things. Pull your fenders in before you set off. Make yourself a sandwich. Or as they say, Ken, sandwich. Because you're going to want something to eat. And when you've been tossed around down in the cabin, it ain't easy to start making food. Instant mash for lunch, breakfast and tea is not good. The other thing is wedge yourself in when you go to the heads for a leak. Because if you don't, you'll get a wet leg. Like what I did. So Wedge yourself in and when pulling your trousers up, don't think you're in your bathroom at home, just pulling your trousers up. Wedge yourself in again, otherwise you might end up head first down the head. So these little snippets of wisdom have all been imparted to me today as part of my journey of discovery. Yeah, a 
and then maybe make yourself a flask of tea. I managed one can, but a lot of it went over the cockpit. The other thing is, it takes a long time to get 45 miles in a boat with a small engine. Now, that could just be that I don't know how to trim sails, but I don't think so. The wind's been, been close hauled all day, the wind's been really finicky, shifting around. Uh, that's had the engine on, but I can only do about three knots on this young one. And, uh, yeah, it takes a long time to get where you want to go. But we're nearly there, we've got about three and a half miles to go. So I'm going to start putting this out preparing to go into the lock at Royal Sovereign Harbour, Eastbourne. I hope that goes okay, I've not been in a lock before. Solo sailing. I know you're not supposed to step off the boat with the engine running, but not a lot I can do about that if I have to tie my own lines to the dock. The good thing is it's got floating pontoon, so that makes it a little bit easier. Well, five minutes to seven in 14 hours. I am cream crackered. <laughs> but I'm in the lock, I've got my berth, and uh, just waiting for the gates to close, which I think is on the hour for every half hour, so it should just be a few minutes. And the walkway goes up, rises up with the lock. I'm tied on four and a half. Got a little springer there, which I figured the boat was going to go backwards, but it doesn't look like it. But the dinghy has. That's okay there. And if you like the videos, subscribe. Costs nothing.